The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, teach us to pray. I think we all have this same desire based on the reluctance to pray that I've observed and have felt myself in various faith communities. Praying makes us nervous. We think surely there's someone who's better qualified. We don't know what to say. We think there's a right way to pray, a good or better way to pray. And so for all of us who hesitate to pray, especially out loud, Jesus' words are helpful. Even more so, the stories he tells afterward are helpful. I don't think the neighbor who suddenly finds themselves in a hospitality bind had rehearsed lines before banging on his friend's door. At midnight, I doubt the words came out perfectly. I could imagine the words were as rough as the banging on the door. And as we think about the parent-child relationship Jesus talks about, when kids ask for things, they tend to get to the point, rarely hesitate, and especially when they're young, ask with exhaustive persistence. These are our models for prayer here in Luke. Not perfect, not even always pleasant, but persistent, unashamed, trusting that God, our good parent, will give even better than all the good parents we've known. Since I'm not so sure how we pray is most critical, let's talk about why we pray. Why make ourselves vulnerable before God? Why risk the uncomfortable feeling, the nerves, the pressure of praying out loud? Or why take the time out of our busy schedules to pray? Why do we pray? How does prayer help us? The disciples could tell prayer was important to Jesus. We hear a lot throughout Luke about Jesus praying. But why? Have you ever thought about it? What do you really want out of your prayer life? What is your heart's desire when you pray? Do you pray because, well, it's just what we do? Is prayer important just because Jesus says it's important and he did it and asks us to do it too? Taking a deeper look, I imagine at first, many would answer the question why pray with something about hoping God might do something that God might intervene, or wanting God to be someone we can see a little clearer and understand a little better, or maybe we want answers. But when you think about praying to this God who created you, this Lord of life who redeemed you, the spirit of truth who sustains you and leads you and guides you, when you think about being in the presence of the triune God of creation who dwells with you and in you and in the world, what do you desire? 
when you intentionally come into God's presence in prayer. In seminary, I spent time with a spiritual director. We talked about classes, life outside school, faith, and she'd always pray for me at the end. If you've never overheard yourself being prayed for, it's a wonderful blessing. I highly recommend it, which is why we've got to work on this not wanting to pray out loud thing. Inviting people to hear our prayers for them is a wonderful gift that we can give. So anyway, there's this one session with my spiritual director that I will never forget. I can even the picture the room at the seminary where we sat. I remember looking out the big windows, the sun was shining, and I was feeling particularly low. Although I didn't even fully understand what was going on, I shared with her as best I could how I was feeling overwhelmed and sad and discouraged by various things, not the least of which was the chaos and despair and anger and heartbreak of our world and wondering what God was doing. What? Why? And where? I had so many questions. And the more I talked, the tighter my chest got and the more emotion came out in my voice. After hearing me out, she invited me to close my eyes and then led me through a guided meditation. Now listen, I'll be the first to admit I hadn't had great success with this kind of thing in the past. I'm often distracted and feel a little awkward, and this time was no exception. I felt kind of weird as we started, and I was pretty skeptical. But I figured, what's the worst that could happen? So here's the gist of what she said. Close your eyes. Picture yourself in a place where you're comfortable. The place can be real or imaginary. Maybe you're walking, maybe you're sitting, but you're at ease. Now imagine God meets you there. You are fully in God's presence. You're comfortable, and God is right there with you. You can ask God anything you want. Whatever question you desire to ask. And so she asks me, what do you want to ask God? And that's when I realized my mind was quiet. All the questions I had been wondering about literally minutes before, not a single one was on the tip of my tongue to ask God. I was at peace in God's presence. I was so content to just be with God, to rest in the holiness that surrounded me. I was grateful, and now that I found myself intentionally in God's presence, the one desire that I had was for God to be God. And I knew that that didn't depend on my questions. Now, I'll be honest, that feeling of contentment did not last. I often think back to this experience when I need to remind myself that God is God and I am not, and that's enough. Now that's not to say that I don't sometimes bang on God's proverbial door and keep asking and wondering and hoping in prayer. It's good to know that God does even better than this reluctant neighbor in our passage. God does even better than the mother and father figures in our lives that give us good gifts. Who are the people to whom you can go shamelessly in inconvenient times and places and ask for something? God's kind of like that. Think of the parent or parental figure who gave and gives you good gifts, who was willing to work hard and sacrifice in order to give you good and proper care. If that person, who is still sinful, still makes mistakes, can do that for you, think of how much more God does as caring parent for you, God's beloved child. The promise that Jesus talks about in Luke in this passage on prayer is the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of God's presence, the promise that God will be God and will be God with us. In a typical worship service, we pray together at least six times, way more if we include the hymns we sing, which can be prayers, the psalms we read that are songs and prayers, and individual prayers we may be lifting up throughout the service. But I want to give us some time to reflect, time to pray, 
time to be intentional about reminding ourselves that we are in God's presence, that God is speaking to us, that we need to listen, that God is listening to us, that we need to speak, that God is okay with us banging on the door in the middle of the night. We've heard a lot over the past few weeks about how we are called out in service to the world, about how we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. Last week, we were reminded, along with Martha, that we are invited to sit at Jesus' feet. And this week, Jesus is reminding us that we have to take time to do just that, to pray, to ask, to seek, to knock, and to receive the Holy Spirit. So let's take just a few minutes in prayer. that was for you, if it was easy or difficult, if it felt natural or was really awkward, but I do know that prayer isn't always easy. If it were, the disciples wouldn't have had to ask about it. There's no right way to pray. It can sound like banging on a door, a late night unexpected request, a child asking for good things, a friend opening a door, or a parent offering good gifts. When in doubt, when the words don't come, you can always try. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. In Jesus' name, 